Are you ready? Are you ready for another two important games in Serie A? Yes, I am. Are you? Yes, hello, welcome into Living Sports here for another episode of Glory Hunter. I hope you enjoyed my singing there in the intro. Was that? Was that? You didn't? Well, I can't promise I won't be doing it again. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button for more daily Football Manager content. And if you missed the last episode, go and check it out. We had our January transfer deadline day here in our third season of Glory Hunter. And we played against top of the league Inter Milan and it was a fairly positive result. So go and check it out today. We play against Lazio, who you can see are in third position in the Serie A. They were in second at the end of last episode, but they've dropped points. And then we play up against Juventus, who are equal on points with ourselves. Two tough games in Serie A today. If we can win them both, though, it sends us up pretty well for the rest of the season. But we do have this very tough spell of games, as you know. Inter, Lazio, Juventus, we've got Atalanta, you can see, are in fourth as well in the... The next one, which we'll be playing in the Italian Cup. Sampdoria, the next Serie A game after this, who are in ninth. I mean, it's, it's a tough spell for us. And then you can see in the top right, we've got Real Madrid in the Champions League. So it's a tough month here, February, for us. Uh, and Glory Hunter here with Roma. But let's see if we can somehow, somehow survive it. You know, still, still in the title fight. If we lose all these games, we're not going to win the title fight. That would be disappointing. But if we play like we did against Inter in the last game... There's a chance we might get some silverware this year, which would be ideal seeing as that's the whole point of the series and we haven't won any silverware yet. But you remember from the last episode, we signed Lindelof and Van der Beek on deadline day, as well as Johansson as well. Actually, the Icelandic central midfielder from Copenhagen to strengthen the squad a little bit after we let go of Gijo and we'd, we'd let go of, uh, of Veritu to AC Milan and we'd let go of Ceballos as well to Atalanta. So we've actually strengthened... Our rivals a little bit by doing that, I suppose, haven't we? So, um, I never never thought about that. But anyway, let's get into today's episode. The first game being away to Lazio. And let's show you the team for that one. And the team for that one is the same team that played against Inter Milan. Because, well, if you can beat top of the league, who, who, who can't you beat? So surely this side should be able to go out and win this one up against third place Lazio Forest. It's Patricio and goal, Zagadou, Lindelof and Romagnoli at centre back, Christensen on the left, Dallo on the right, Camavinga, Pellegrini and Van de Beek in midfield with Tammy Abraham and Sesco up front. Let's get into it and let's see if we can continue this amazing run of form. And the reason for the team not changing as well is Declan Rice is still out injured and Kai is still out in international duty, just like the last game. This is probably the most important month of our career so far here in Glory Hunt. I know it's only been two and a half years long, our career, but this is probably, probably the most important one. And let's see how we do. Away to Lazio, I mean, away to Lazio. We're still in the same city, you know. The Rome derby here, very, very important indeed. Pellegrini ball into the box, and that appears to be a foul, unless Zagadou has just fallen over like a sack of potatoes. Not yet been a shot in this match, but we could have a penalty kick. Indeed we will. Veritu, who was a penalty kick taker, has left the club, obviously. So next up is going to be who? It's Tammy Abraham. Can he get himself a goal? Right down the middle. 1-0 to ourselves. 12 minutes into the game from the penalty spot. What a start to this game for us. Zagadou getting filled in the box, and that's right down the middle from Abraham. Right down the middle. Cool, calm, collected. That puts us up into second place at the moment. Free kick. Pellegrini into the back post. Van der Beek with the header. There he's comes to have a yellow card early on in this game. But the keeper holds onto it. And let's see how Lazio will do. They kick it long. And Zagadou heads it into Van der Beek. Kamavinga back to Lindelof. And back over to Zagadou. And Kamavinga with it now. Forward to Sesco. He's in behind the defence. Can he finish? He can. The flag's up though. I don't even see it if my head's in the way. The assistant referee has put his flag up. That probably means it's going to be disallowed. Indeed it is. Oh, good run for Sesco. Just missed time to ever so slightly. Let's see how close this was. You can see Sesco up there. Yeah, he's probably a good yard offside there. Nice run, though. Nice cool finish. Just uh, 
didn't count, unfortunately. And there's a highlight straight from the free kick that Lazio received after that offside. And it's come out to this left-hand side. Immobile back to Kamara. They're playing the 4-3-3 with that holding midfield player, uh, Lazio. The ball launched long. And Dalla heads it, but Luis Alberto gets a hold of it. He plays it down. Lindelof passes it back to Ray Patricio in our goal. And I don't want to say the name of the left winger for Lazio because I can't. There's a lot of letters in a weird order and I couldn't say it there. But Raul Moro has managed to get himself a goal. Oh, Omojo, 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 Omoy Juanfo. That's a hard name to say. I think I might call him Omo. Yeah, but anyway, doesn't matter. Immobile there, got the ball into Omo. It's a good block from Lindelof, but it falls to Moro. And Moro scores himself a goal. Probably take a one-all draw, or, or any draw at all, in this game away to Lazio. But we would quite like to continue our winning run in Serie A. Let's see if we can do it here. The ball for this time to Cesco. Gobby onside. He wasn't. He was offside. I thought he was onside that time, but he wasn't. He was off. And uh, another missed chance for Sesco up there. As we uh, we go into half time, one all. We're not playing too badly, though the average rating suggests we are. Let's see if we can somehow go out there and get ourselves a winner in the second half. First highlight of the second half, and Kamavinga has it over to Lindelof. And Dallow's in acres of space on this right-hand side. He comes forward. Will he get the ball into the box? He gets to the byline. And Abraham heads it wide of the goal. He's got to hit the target for there, surely. Well, Christensen is struggling and on a yellow and struggling for fitness. So he can come off. We'll bring on Calafiore to play on the left-hand side with 20 minutes to go. And Kramaric will come on up front for Sesco after Sesco kept wandering offside for those two chances he had earlier in the game. And this second half has not had much at all happening in it as the time is ticking down here and it looks like we're going to hold on for a one-all draw I don't know if it's holding on for a one-all draw I don't know if we should be disappointed but we'll take the one-all draw either way one-all against Lazio is not a bad result at all and it gives us a little bit of time until this game up against Juventus next week which is another tough one Kramer when he came on did not do a lot at all in that game Zagadou, Lindelof and Kamavinga are best performers in there. You see, I'm not sure whether I should be disappointed or whether I should be happy with that result. I suppose I'll take it. That's about the best I can say, isn't it? We are in fourth position, you can see there. But just seven points behind Inter. Inter won their game this week. We drew it, so we'd lost some ground in that race up against them. We'll see how Napoli do with their game in hand. But otherwise, after bringing Inter back into the race with us... They may have pulled the pulled away again. Look how tight that league table is. Napoli in second on 43. Juventus in seventh on 41. Two points separate sixth positions there. Crazy. Looking at the momentum for that last match, we dominated the start of the game. And in fact, most of the first half. And it was fairly even throughout the second. But a little spell halfway through the second half where Lazio probably could have got themselves a goal. But uh, probably all in all, one all probably was a fair result. I say we've got a game against Juventus in five days, so we'll jump forward to that and we'll let you know anything if anything interesting happens between them and then, but I don't imagine there will be. So remember that time I said I would come back to you if anything interesting happened? Well, Tammy is out for the next month with a hernia. Typical, isn't it? During our most important month, Tammy gets himself injured. Ideal. Right, so we are the last game here on the Saturday, and you can see... From the results above us, some fairly interesting games have already happened. Napoli drew against Parma, which means they dropped some points. Inter Milan lost against AC Milan in the Milan derby. They're 3-0, which means Inter have dropped some points. So if we win this game against Juventus, we go up to 45, which is just four points behind Inter Milan. We'll have played the same number of games at that point. But we will have a game in hand on AC Milan, who would be above us at that stage as well. When in that game, we'd be above them. It's it's tight, but we can't afford to drop points against Juventus today. I'll take the draw, I suppose. But really, we cannot be losing. If we draw, we go up to 43 points, staying six points behind Inter Milan. Again, a couple of wins, not too far back. But I really don't want to be losing. It would be dropping down to seventh place if we did lose today. We, we can't be letting that happen. So we're going to go with the same team that beat Inter and drew with Lazio, minus Tammy Abraham, obviously. We've had to change that. Sesco is moving to that pressing forward role, and Kramaric will play up front alongside him. The rest of the team, Kamavinga, Pellegrini and Van der Beek in midfield. Christensen and Dallo in the wide areas. 
from Magnoli, Zagadou and Lindelof at the back and puts his shoe in goal. Very strange doing that in reverse. I, I don't think I like it. I'm not sure I'll do it again. But anyway, we go up against Juventus today, away from home. And uh, yeah, they struggled this year. They've changed their manager halfway through the season. They, they seem to be doing that quite a lot, to be honest, to Juventus. You can see their team there. Morata up front, Kulisevsky, Kays in behind, Locatelli and Arter in midfield. They're playing a 4-2-3-1. And let's see if our 3-5-2 can go up against that quite nicely. We've got a corner ball. Pellegrini in. It's headed away by Bonucci. Dallo back out to Pellegrini. Loads of space for him. Kamavinga. Will he hit that? He finds Kramaric who hits it. Oh, what a finish from Kramaric. His eighth goal of the season. Kamavinga, the provider, yet again, so often. Kamavinga, even though he's playing in a ball-winning midfielder role in the centre of the three, he finds some fantastic passes. And Kramaric just drills that into the bottom corner. See Kamavinga here. Finds Kramaric just peeled away to this left-hand side. Hits it first time. Right in the bottom corner. No chance for the goalkeeper. And five minutes in, we lead 1-0 here. A dream start. 20 minutes into the game, Juventus only had one shot. Now, now two, just as I say that, obviously. But it's been a, a fairly boring game, but one that we're leading one now, and I would happily have no more highlights in this whole game if we held on to this 1-0 lead. You might you may not enjoy that at home, because there won't be much for you to see, but I'd be more than happy for that to happen. But there is a highlight just at the end of this first half. Guerrero at left back, back to Benucci and Locatelli, and it's back to Chesney in the goal, and they launch it long. Does Morata win the header? No, Lindelof does. He's been great since he arrived here from Man United. Sesko through to Van de Beek. Oh, it's off the outside of the post. Oh, nearly, nearly the two Man United, former Man United players, I say, that we signed, combined there, sort of, for that goal. Lindelof winning the defensive header, and Van de Beek nearly got himself a goal. Pushing on through on that left-hand side of the midfield. In behind the defence and he should have finished it. What an effort for Van de Beek there to get his first goal in Roma colours. But he didn't quite do it and we're still leading 1-0 as we start this second half. Throw in from Christensen on the left-hand side. He's really made that left-back or left-wing-back roll his own. Pellegrini with it. He's through. Can he finish? Oh, he's just missed the target altogether. How has he done that? The, just It was like the Red Sea parting with the two centre-backs there and somehow Pellegrini has not managed to even hit the target never mind score a goal Guerrero throws that into Mares. back to Kulisevsky I didn't even know that Mares was playing for Juventus the ball into the middle and it's cleared away by Dallo out for a corner ball and it's going to get swung in by Guerrero from that left hand side Locatelli goes up for the header but Camavinga wins it and Chiesa has it and Pellegrini goes to meet him Locatelli that's the end of the highlight bro you, we need to go and make some changes I think there's some tired legs or some beginning to be tired legs out there I think Van der Beek could probably come off. We'll bring on Declan Rice to play that box-to-box -box role, who's a little bit injured, technically, but he can still play, say, our medical staff, and Dalo can come off as well. And we'll bring on Salam Ackles to play on that right-hand side. 20 minutes to go in this game, and we're still leading 1-0. There's going to be one more chance for Juventus, at least I can tell, but maybe we can get ourselves 2-0 up before that happens. Salam Ackles on this right-hand side. Goes down, tries to get the Bayern, but plays it into Pellegrini. Pellegrini gets the ball back from Salamakers. It's deflected off. Somebody has went in. I'm not sure who it deflected off of. The goal's been given to Pellegrini. They are checking for offside, but the assistants run away, so that normally means it's not offside. Let's see what happens here from this VAR check. The goal has been awarded. <laughs> We're winning 2-0 against Juventus here. Let's watch this, this, this goal again. Pellegrini plays the ball to Salamakers, gets it back, hits it, it just comes straight off the left. Straight off the left and into the goal. And we lead 2-0. Where was the offside possibility? Is it the, the pass back to Pellegrini here? Yes, it is. But he stays onside, thankfully. And we lead 2-0. Right. 10 minutes to go. Let's um let's let's have some instructions here. Uh, we're going to be um time wasting a lot. Play a much slower tempo, much shorter passing, and uh, out of possession, we're going to uh play a, a standard line. A lower line of engagement, and uh, and yeah, we're we're just gonna just yeah, slowly. You can see my words weren't working there. I was just saying words, and none of them seemed to be making any sense. I'm getting very excited about this turnaround in fortune at this important stage of our season here. Beating Inter, draw with Lazio, possibly going to beat Juventus here. Oh.
I take off one Icelandic player and bring on another, Johansson can come on for Christensen in the left wing back area. And as there is five minutes to go, we will change to a defensive mentality. And there's four minutes out of time. I don't think there's enough time for Juventus to get two here. Patricio launches that ball long. And Benucci has it. There's two and a half minutes to go of added time. Surely not enough time for Juventus to get two goals. It'd be heartbreaking if it was. Chiesa plays the ball into the middle. Morata heads that one in. And it's going to be a scary last two minutes here as Juventus do pull one back. But there's not going to be enough time for another highlight. And we hold on and we beat Juventus 2-1. We've beaten Inter. We've drawn Malazzo. We've beaten Juventus. A tough spell of matches. And we've come out of it winning most of them. Kramaric and Pellegrini with the goals. Kramaric obviously playing instead of the injured Tammy Abraham and getting himself a goal. Doing what he needs to do when he comes into this team. And now you can see, we're only up to fourth place. It might not sound like much, but we're just four points off of first place Inter Milan now after all those results. Two points behind Napoli and we're also two points behind AC Milan, but they do have, have one game played more than us. So ignore that. We'll be above them when we've on our game in hand. This is a tight title battle. Still, the top seven separated by only eight points. The top four separated by only four points at the moment. This, this could go right down to the last game of the season with a whole load of teams in this title fight. And you're going to get to see two of those teams in that title fight play against each other next episode when we play up against Atalanta. However, that's in the Italian Cup quarterfinal. Another piece of silverware we could win this year. I say we beat Ternana. 8-1 in the third round. I don't imagine we'll do the same against Atalanta, who are slightly better than Ternana. You can see Ternana down in 19th in Serie A. Atalanta just the one point behind us at the moment. So we will be playing against them in the next episode, as well as Sampdoria, who are down in ninth. So not an easy game in Serie A in that one. Then the episode after that, we've got Real Madrid and Napoli. Napoli, who are in second. I tell you. This, this month, you're getting to see basically the whole of February because there's so many exciting games happening at this stage of the season. It could be season-defining this month if we can continue our good form that we're currently on. So if you have enjoyed this episode, then please do leave a like on it. It really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next time we play Atalanta in that quarter-final of the Italian Cup, we'll see you then.